What's going on guys, Boom on soon here. Today I want to talk to you guys about 7 tips that will actually help you play Rainbow Six Siege a bit more like a pro. Now the first one is slightly obvious, if you haven't worked it out yet then I'm kind of surprised, but the character Sledge can actually use the Sledgehammer to beach through castles or walls. These walls are usually bulletproof and actually pretty hard to get past most of the time. So you can actually use Sledge very effectively to break through these walls and occasionally you can even use it efficiently because he brings down the wall so quickly, it brings down the defences so quickly that barely many enemies have time to react to the sudden appearance of this character. You can see in a couple of these clips, although I do fail them a couple of times, I'm able to get a wall down, enemies have no idea what's going on, uh, get a nade in there, and a lot of the time I was actually very successful from these quick breach modes where I come around a corner, enemies wouldn't suspect me, bang, a couple of kills. Now the second tip I want to give you is the fact that the defensive character Doc can actually revive himself with the Stim Pistol. Now to demonstrate this I had to fall from a window a couple of times, but you can see right there, usually the typical hold F to slow the bleeding uh, is always there, and if you press 3 while playing as Doc, or for me it's 3, if you press 4 I believe, or 5 for most people, if you use the Stim Pistol on yourself at least, uh, then you will go up and revive yourself. This is actually really helpful if you're the last one alive, maybe. Um, or if there's two of you left, you go down, he can't get to you and you can use it. In general, the stim pistol is actually pretty helpful in its own. Now again, I'll be honest, I slightly cheered for this one. Uh, Capcom was one a specialist that I haven't yet unlocked uh, due to limited time in the game. But right here, this little tip will help beginners mostly. And you can actually see this giant needle that sticks out the wall when Capcom sets up a booby trap. And you can actually hit it through a barrier. I didn't set one up there, but you can actually work out where the trap will be and hit it with a bullet and it will go down. So if you're ever walking up to a window or you walk up to a doorway, always have a look and see if you can see that giant needle if you can't see the red laser, which is pretty obvious in its own right. Um, but you can't actually shoot that nail, you have to actually hit the explosive device in order for the trap to go down. Now this little tip is something weird about the features of Rainbow Six and something that hasn't actually been highly publicized is the fact that one shot to the head will kill instantly from any weapon no matter where it hits on the head certain characters actually wear earmuffs if it hits those earmuffs that character will die as well if any bullet from any, ap any gun in the absolute whole game even a handgun hits you in the head again even the earmuffs you will die that is one thing that I personally have a slight problem with, I, a problem with. Um, I sort of feel that a lot of the time it comes down to luck and a few players are skilled enough to instantly go for those headshots but a lot of the time it just comes down to luck and recall pattern honestly and I kind of hope that you have change it to a two, heart, two shot headshot or in fact make body shots more valuable. This next little tip is again something a lot of people have already worked out um, but I still see a lot of people struggling with it, especially new players. When you go to place an object a couple of times, if you just press the button, your character will just pull it out and instantly put it back. And the reason it's doing that is because the placement is invalid. There's no wall notification or anything. And occasionally you end up in an awkward spot where you place down the equipment where you don't want it to be. So if you hold the key, your character does in fact hold it up. And once he sort of presents it forward and this little dot appears in the middle of the screen, you can place it in that location. That works with uh, Kachunka's minigun, or machine gun even. Uh, it also works with a personal shield. Uh, and I do believe it also works with the tripwire, except with the tripwire he puts his hand from the coil of the tripwire onto a little wire. Now this final little tip is that Bandit's shock wire is probably one of the most underused but also powerful pieces of equipment in the entire game and I'm serious when I say that. You can use this thing in so many different situations. You can put it behind barriers so enemies will jump over, lose health. You can put it on tripwire, on objectives so people you know can't go up and grab the hostage maybe. A little bit cheaper it always works. A personal tactic I like is actually going up and placing down three pieces of wire and placing the shock wire in the middle one. A lot of the times enemy enemies will see three of them and just casually walk all the way through it and not really care about what's in it. That does actually help me a couple of times in certain points um, and overall it's something I want to think about, especially putting it on wall defences so you can shock enemies through the wall and maybe, maybe even identifying when they're arriving. Now hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, so it's a little bit short, a little bit rushed. I'm extremely busy at the moment. 
Hopefully this will eventually clear up or I'll be able to get into a bit of a groove and a bit of a schedule again with easy videos. Uh, Battlefield video eventually on the way, hopefully Wednesday's video, um, which will be basic. Um, but with any luck, it'll also be a Battlefield video with a bit of Rainbow Six in there as well. But hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you'd like to say and subscribe, until then, Blue Monsoon, out.